Hello and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, my name is Nelly Deutsch and I'm going to be taking you through a different kind of um, presentation. It's not really a presentation. So uh, you're in for uh, a big surprise. If you could just uh, add in the chat box where you're from and anything else you'd like to share, use the chat box as we go. I'm recording this and I'm going to upload it to YouTube, but your names will not appear because I don't have the chat in at all. So the attendee list and the chat will not appear. The only thing that will appear is the whiteboard and my image uh, from time to time. So that's it. So let's see, uh, what do we have today? We've got uh, participants from, oh, I just noticed that my image is gone. Oh, here it is. Uh, from Argentina, welcome. And um, let's see, echo has gone. <laughs> there was an echo. Um, that's interesting. It was there and now it's gone. Well, that's good. Italy, hello from uh, from Toronto, Canada to Italy. And we've got Thomas. Thomas, I hope that uh, you won't have any problems today uh, because this is going to be a very, very uh, different kind of uh, session. So let's get started. So a little bit about uh, the session today. Uh, it's different in the sense that um, you're not going to hear me talking too much, I hope, and you're going to be doing a lot of the work together. So it's uh, the topic is teachers on sick leave. How many of you teach or have taught in a school? I'm sure all of you have gone to schools. Anybody homeschooled here? So if you've gone to a school or you have taught in a school, this topic will be very familiar. Um, anybody homeschooled? If you were homeschooled, you can add the word home for homeschooled. Is still going to school. Yeah, we're still teaching and learning. All right. So you're familiar with the term sick leave. But not only teachers have sick leave, but everybody who works in an organized place uh, has a right to take days and sometimes longer. A certain number of days in a year that you can get sick leave and you still get your salary. That's the idea that you get paid for being sick. So it doesn't go against you. So you teach at a local high school. Great. So we're going, that's the topic. And uh, the method is through collaborative teaching or learning, whatever you want to call it. It's both through Google Drive and through a PowerPoint presentation. So uh, that's basically what we're going to be doing. I shared a link before, but here it is again. There's the uh, link that you'll be using later on. So let's just go through um, a little bit about what we're going to be doing. First of all, what is sick leave? You know, when it comes to teachers, is it like any other sick leave? Is it similar to other sick leaves? In other words, when a teacher is sick, is it the same as when a doctor is sick or hospital staff are not able to come to work? Okay, so I want you to uh, start thinking about what does it mean? What does it mean when a teacher is on sick leave? And who are the stakeholders involved? And when I say stakeholders, what do I mean? If you can write in the chat, who is a school stakeholder? <laughs> That's good. The students are out to play. Yeah, we'll get to that. The students definitely are the school stakeholders, but not only the students. And you can think of any school. It doesn't matter whether it's a K-12 or uh, adults, higher education, school board, parents. Very good, Katu. 
any other stakeholders. Teachers, of course, there are definitely the school stakeholders. They have a stake. The idea is that they have a stake. They're involved in some way. So who else is involved in, uh, in the school? Parents are involved. Okay, think of everyone that the administration, very, very good, whether it's the principal or other uh, administrators, policy makers, but administrators, definitely. Who else? That's right. Who else? Okay, we'll get to it. You think about it as taxpayers, excellent knives. That's right. The community is also involved. So everybody, even if you don't have children and the teacher is sick, everybody's involved. Okay, that's why teachers are so important and they're paid so much money because they, uh, they have such a high influence. Okay, they, they influence so many stakeholders. All right, so keep that in mind how important a teaching job is. So teachers on sick leave, there's something called banking days. Have you heard of the term banking days? It's a new idea and uh, taxpayers came up with the idea. So the teachers can actually save, like you save money in the bank, you can save sick days. I don't know if you have unions in your schools or whether you heard of a teachers union or any other unions, workers union. It's a nice idea. Well, it exists in the United States. It's a big thing now. You can save your sick days and either get paid when you go on pension or you can give it away and share it with teachers who are really, really sick. So, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, there could be uh, sicknesses and illnesses where teachers could be off for a long time and they need to be paid. They have to go to the hospital and things like that, and they may not have uh, insurance. So uh, you can also share your banking days with other teachers. OK, it's a nice idea. There are a lot of ideas coming up. All right. So this is just uh, some information that I got about sick leave that I'd like to share with you. The question now is how many sick days should teachers have? Okay, when you think of the school year, how long is the school year? And how many days should they have? How many days do they have? You can think of uh, your schools or your teachers and how many days they were away or were not away. So numbers, how many days do you think that uh, teachers should have? Let's see what you have to say. 10 days, a year, we're talking about a year or, or is that for a month, Thomas? A year, <laughs> okay, a school year, right. Okay, that's a question. Um, you know, some say at least uh, 12 days a year, one day a month, maybe, maybe more. Okay, so the question, of course, is how many days? And, and if you're sick, you're sick. What can you do about it? So sick leave is actually paid absence. You get paid for being away from work because you're sick. And then there's, of course, uh, what does it mean to be sick? Is a headache uh, being sick. And then there's also family sick leave. In other words, teachers have young children. What if their kids you know, under the age of 16, they, or whatever it is, 12, I think they can't stay at home. So what happens when a teacher's child is sick? Is that counted as a sick day or not? 
in Argentina, you know, you don't work 12 months, that's for sure. I think in most places around the world, uh, at least universities, they're about seven months, six to seven months a year. And I think uh, high school, the K-12 are about uh, nine, I think nine months a year. That's how long it is. Uh, if you take off the vacations, it could be eight, eight to nine months because there are a lot of religious holidays and so on. So yeah, it's nine months, but then, you know, take off uh, some of the holidays like Christmas. I think that that would make it less. Okay, so uh, what about families? Well, this is an article that was posted today, September 29, at 3.30 a.m. in the United States. And um, it's the board, the school board at Chakopi approved this contract there was uh, with the teachers at their meeting. And it's a two-year contract, an increase in salaries, which is really, really nice. And then they mention sick leave. And if you notice, uh, some of the changes are 20 days a year. Listen to this. Some other changes to the contract include an increase in family sick leave to up to 20 days a year. Thomas, you said 10. This is twice. What do you think of that? 20 days a year. And we're talking about nine months, eight to nine months. So 20 days. <laughs> Okay, so teachers must be happy. But what about the other stakeholders? Okay, we're talking about all the stake to match up with a new state statute for immediate family sickness. The contract also added emergency leave time. If something happens, a teacher can take emergency leave with pay for up to two days per year. So you don't have to say anything. You just don't come to school. You don't have to tell anyone. All right, so this is the teachers' union. And the board, the school board, has approved this. And this, of course, is in the United States. All right, so something to think about. All right, so teacher sick leave. There are three areas that you're going to be discussing because you're going to do the work. You'll see in a minute. First of all, substitute teacher. What happens with a substitute teacher. And this is a huge problem, even for universities, because you do have to have a substitute teacher. I mean, students pay money. And if the faculty is absent due to uh, an illness, students have to finish the semester. I mean, what's going to happen? And if you think about the K-12 as well, so we need substitute teachers, definitely. But what happens, you probably remember when you were in school. I remember when I was in school. I remember uh, more about the substitute teachers than I remember about my teachers because we had a good time. We had a really, really great time with our substitute teachers. Okay, because uh, we drove them crazy. Okay, that was the idea. The idea is to drive the substitute teacher to tears, okay, um, and have a good time. But if you're the substitute teacher, that's another story. So substitute teachers. And then, of course, uh, Knives mentioned free period. If there's no teacher and it's an emergency and you, you couldn't get a substitute teacher and your school doesn't have them lined up, then what about a free period? You know, if they're younger kids, they have to be watched. Older kids, university adults, that's, uh, that's fine. And then there's learning online. Kids can stay home if the teacher's away, or you can put them in the computer room or, or have them bring their own devices, and, and they can continue learning if the teacher provided, okay, uh, something. And there should be a bank of activities learning activities for the students. Something to think about. All right, so substitute teacher, you're going to be adding to that. How do you feel about substitute teachers, by the way? If you can give me thumbs up, thumbs down, funny faces, you've got enough um, uh, smileys there. What would you say would best suit? There's my um, 
a substitute teacher. What's your um, <laughs> Thomas <laughs> substitute teacher? <laughs> is that a sleeping teacher? Okay, so if you can go into the uh, smileys, which one would you choose? You might choose this, right? Clap, clap, everybody's happy. Yay, the teacher is away. We've got a substitute teacher. We can have some fun or free period. Okay. So everybody has their own reactions to sub. But how many students and other stakeholders take substitute teachers seriously? Okay, um, I'm not sure. So, what will it be like for stakeholders when a teacher is away? What happens? There's a free period, maybe. And what can be done? What are some of the things that can be done when a teacher is absent? Maybe online learning. Again, what can be done? These are the stakeholders that you're going to work with. First of all, there's the principal or the administrator of the university, principal of a school. And then there's the community, the taxpayers, parents. In every case, even with uh, older students, somebody pays the tuition if it's university students, the students themselves, other teachers of the school, because it might get really noisy, teacher who's sick, and the substitute teacher. These are the stakeholders that you're going to be working with. And what you're going to come up with a solution. What solution could these offer? From the principal's point of view, from the community point of view, parents, students, other teachers of the school, what will each of these suggest? Because they're going to take their sides. So what solution do they offer? What will the principal, first of all, how is the principal involved in the fact that a teacher is away on sick leave? Sports. Well, you'll have a chance to do that in a minute. So principal, okay, how is he the stakeholder? What does he lose? What can he do? Okay, what would he suggest? Community, how is the community involved? And what solution would the community have? And don't forget, a lot of these things have to be prepared in advance. You can't wait until a teacher is away. Okay, you have to be prepared for emergencies in advance. Parents, how are they involved and what solution do they have? Many parents go to work, so for them it could be really, really important to make sure that their kids are in school. Students, how are they involved and what solutions could they have? So the teacher himself or herself who's on sick leave, what about the teacher? Okay, how is he involved and what solution? Other teachers of the school, how are they stakeholders? How are they involved and what solutions could they offer? And then of course there's a substitute teacher. Okay. And now for your part, what you're going to do is your, how many do we have? We've got eight people here. Uh, you're going to work together. There's the uh, link to the document. I'll take you there right now so we can uh, all take a look at it. You're going to be filling in the slides. And I think that my, oh, maybe it does work. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to screen share, take you there right now. Oops, keeps throwing me back. All right, I hope it doesn't throw you anywhere. Okay, so here it is. There are two places for it. Let me share the other link. The other one is on WizIQ, but you can't really write on it. 
so it's not much good. But here's the link in case um, you're looking for it. Okay, there it is. That's the link uh, on WizIQ, and I want to talk about that because you're going to share this. Okay, you're going to work on it together and separately, and then you're going to share your work by adding it in your account and then sharing the link in, um, in the course. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so I see you're here. Okay. If you go, if you're on Gmail, I would be able to see you, but if you don't have a Gmail account, you can still work on it. Okay, so there it is. Here are the slides, all the slides, up to um, over here. This is where it starts. This is where you can collaborate and add your ideas. You can also change the colors. You know, you're free to um, change things as you see fit and then you know add what can be done here are the stakeholders see it looks a lot better on uh, I think it looks a lot better there's the community I think it looks a lot better on Google Drive than it does um, in the uh, in the live class okay so these are the slides the last one is the substitute teacher Okay, everything is here. Um, what you're going to do is simply, you've got the comments box right here at the top right. So you can add your comments as you go. You also have the notes at the bottom. If you notice, there are notes at the bottom. You can write different things. For each slide, uh, you can write notes. Okay, so if I'm going to go into the first, well, the first slide, you don't need to. But this slide, what will it be like for the stakeholders? Okay, you can uh, decide what you're going to add by going into the notes at the bottom of the slide, adding information there. And then you can decide how you're going to do it. You can add images. You can decide together. Now, how are you going to do this together? Well, on the document. Okay, so through the comments box, uh, there's also a, uh, there should be, let me see, there should be a conversation here as well. I don't see it for some reason. Uh, let's see. There's only present. There's no chat. There used to be a chat. I think um, Google Drive took it off. At some point, there used to be a chat for this. But I don't see it anymore, which means that they may have taken it off. And I see that the comments is not working. Let's see what's going on here. Seems to me that the comments box is not working. Let me let me check it again to make sure that I've given everybody edit. Interesting. If I give you edit, you can't comment. That's ridiculous. Um, you should be able to add comments as well. So I see that, oh, there, the comments box is back. Okay, there are two places you can comment. You can go into insert and um, use the, eyes. Uh, so the comment is only used one at a time. I think that's why uh, you can't all use it at once. And there's no, ch oh, here's the chat. Here's the chat. I found the chat. The chat is at the top right. And you can see it now so I'll just say hello you should try to use the chat as much as possible I think you maybe you have to be in in your Gmail account to be able to use the chat and right now oh, I see let's see who just came up knives okay very good so knives you're able to uh, if you go in with your Gmail you should be able to use the chat okay and then you can chat your way through Another thing you can do is you can copy this and share it and work on it. Okay, if you go into File, you'll be able to download this as a PowerPoint presentation, work on it, or you can also copy it by going into File and Copy. And then you can work that way. Where is the copy here? You can work that way as well. Oh, there's a copy. Make a copy. If you make a copy, you can also work. And then you can decide. 
What I'd like you to do right now is decide who you're going to work with. There aren't that. I thought there would be more participants, but I see that there aren't. There are only uh, seven participants, which means that um, you can work on the document together. It's not too many people. Are there any questions? Because you're going to be doing this for the next couple of minutes, and I'll see how it goes. For about 10 minutes, I'll give you 10 minutes, and we'll see uh, how things uh, work out. Okay, so use the chat here. You can use the chat there, and um, I'll let you work. Okay, so you've got about 15, 15 minutes to see how much you can get done. And while you're doing that, I'm going to have my coffee. Yeah, the chat's there. Yeah, I found it. All right. I hope everybody's okay. You reloaded, and it worked. Okay. I guess, uh, you know, people think that uh, Google is supposed to be perfect. It's not. There are quite a few problems with it uh, at times. Let me just change here something. All right. Okay, so how was the experience? I gave you about 15 minutes, 10 minutes more like it. So uh, how was the experience of working on your own without sound? Let me make sure the recording is back. Okay, um, you worked in silence. You didn't hear my voice uh, battling <laughs> great at the end. All right, uh, this is one way to get students to work from home. In other words, think of the teacher or a substitute teacher. It could be the teacher who's on sick leave, but generally the kids don't have to know that uh, it's a substitute teacher, but a substitute teacher could do exactly this. You don't have to see the teacher. You think it's your teacher and uh, you have an assignment. You do your work just the way you did. So that's one way of uh, making sure that the students are working but using the internet for it. Okay, so when I asked, okay, we can get a substitute teacher who can work with the students online. Now, the students don't have to know that it's a substitute teacher. Which means, or the teacher can tell them that whenever I'm sick, there's a substitute teacher and you will be graded for the work. Okay, you can do this at university. Um, in high school, I'm not so sure. Yeah, the recording is now back. Yeah, grading is really important. Otherwise, nobody moves unless they get a grade, right? Grading is really, really important. It's like getting a salary. It's like, you know, you get paid for, uh, for doing the work. Okay, so that's uh, what I did. Instead of giving a free period, okay? Because we don't, if you think of the stakeholders, um, it's not a good idea to uh, give the students uh, a free period. No. Okay. All right. So let's see what you've done. I'm going to screen share so we can all take a look at uh, the collaborative work. And let's see how much you got done. Okay. This was live. Okay. So there's my Gmail. Okay. Here it is. There's the Google document. And I see we've got some comments here. Very good. Okay. I see that you've added comments. Isn't that interesting? You know, when I went to share it, you know, I made it public. Anyone with the link, anyone who has the link can access, no sign in required. But does edit mean that there's no comments? You can't add comments? Because if I add comments, only comments, you won't be able to edit, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure that Google 
is doing uh, everything they can with this. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to go into the present mode. Okay, so let's go to the top and see what we've got here. Okay, so present um, with speaker notes. We could do that, and we can also just present. Okay, so here I am. You can see the presentation. Isn't it beautiful? All right, so let's see what you've managed to do. That's what I did. I don't see anything here yet. Okay, you're going to have to add something here. Uh, this I added something to this slide. I don't see anything. And then something over here. Okay, nothing here. You'll have to add something here. Principle. I don't see anything. Uh, nothing was done. Okay, so uh, nothing was done which means that you've got a lot of work to do until next time. Okay, so um, let's go back. See, it's working. It's automatic. I'm not moving anything. So it's just going on its own. Okay, so let's stop that and go back to uh, into class. Okay, so that's what you're going to do uh, during the week. Let's go back to class. Okay, let me stop the screen sharing. So I didn't see anything. What happened? Okay, if you could share what happened, we've got about 15 minutes for your reflections and your comments. So what happened? And you're free to use the mic. If you'd like me to sh pass it on to you, let me know what happened. Why did you not get the work done? Okay, if you can add in the chat, what happened? In fact, I'm going to give you, let's go into a whiteboard so you can add your comments. Okay, what happened? But not freehand, okay? Use the, um, the keyboard to add your comments. What happened? Okay, you've got your... Um, text here if you look at the um, okay over here let me get color so use the text okay the a for text what happened okay please share on the whiteboard I, I noticed that you did write in the notes somebody wrote in the notes okay which is great and you can add it if you write in the notes, the next stage is actually to add it to the PowerPoint presentations. So what happened, everybody? Okay, if you can add your experiences and what happened, and maybe make some suggestions. You only had 10 minutes, okay? You could say that that wasn't enough time. You had no permission to work, but it was made public. That's interesting. Well, if you send me an email, I'll, I'll share my email with you. If you send me an email, okay, you'll be, just ask for permission, okay? Ask for permission, I'll give it to you. Okay, permission, so you can continue working on it, because that's what you're going to be doing during the week. I had no permission to work on the slides, and I kept refreshing when it finally worked. Okay, that must be knives. And uh, somebody else says, I'm working with a new PC, and I will do the assignment later on. Okay. Any other comments, just to get an idea of how things worked or didn't work? And Guadalupe says, I was never able to write. If you could write that, uh, Guadalupe, on the whiteboard. So that you can sense the difference between seeing things on the whiteboard and having to look at them in the chat. And see what appeals to you better. Some people like the visual in front of them and don't like the chat. There wasn't enough time. Very good, Philip. I like that. That's right. If you could add that to the whiteboard, just write, there wasn't enough time. You can copy and paste it on the whiteboard by going into the A. 
Okay, so don't be shy about going using uh, your writing tools and writing on the board. Including there wasn't enough time. I think everybody has um, writing tools, so there shouldn't be a problem. Um, how to do that? Well, Philip, um, you go into, there's an A here. You should be able to see on the left side, there's an A. You click on the A, and when you click on, and then click on the whiteboard. So click on the A, click on the whiteboard, and you should be able to do it. I can screen share and show you. Try it. Again, you go to the A on the left, you click on it, and then you take your mouse and you click on the whiteboard. You just push it, and then you'll see an editor and you'll be able to write. Let me know if it's working for you. It's really a nice, um, nice idea, but if you don't know how to do it, you know, it's not easy. People think, well, you know, it's easy, just write. No, but you really have to know what you're doing. So, Philip, are you able to do it? Just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down in the chat if you're able to write on the whiteboard or not. Oh, you're not. Okay. So, let me screen share. Okay. I'll screen share and show you how it's done. Okay. This is how you do it. Okay, you go to the A. Can you see this, Philip? Let me know in the uh, chat if you can see this. You click on the A and you bring it. You see my mouse going and you click. So again, you go to the A and you go over to the whiteboard and you click. And then it comes up. I hope you can see it. Can you see it? And then you can make it larger. Okay, let's go again to the A where it says text. Click on it. And then you can change the size. I hope you can see that. You can change the font color. Let's make it pink. And then I can write, is this working? Is this working? You can also uh, highlight it or not highlight, make it bold. There, now it's bold. And then if I want to make a change, I click on it and then the editor comes back. Philip, are you able to see this? I'll get an image and share the image with you. There, that's what it looks like. Capture an image. Let me save the image. I'll call it image. Okay, Philip, I hope you were able to see that. I'm gonna stop screen sharing. What a loop was. Okay, let me uh, get the um, the image here that I uh, I just took an image. Um, what did I call the image? What did I call it? Uh, let's see. Ah, image. I called it image. Okay, so the image is coming up, and you'll see it in a minute. There is the image. Okay, there. Now you can see it. That's the image, Philip. Of what it looks like. This is what the uh, the whiteboard editor looks like. Okay, can you see that? Okay, there's you can change the color of the font. Okay, in this case it's kind of reddish pink. You can change the background. You can make it bold. So this is the editor that comes up. Oh, you are you doing it? All right, so try it again. It's a lot of fun, and students love it. You know, they love it. You, you give them the whiteboard, and, and, and they enjoy it so much. So this is one thing that a substitute teacher can do. Think of me as your substitute teacher. You see me, but you don't have to see the teacher, and then you can say, surprise, I'm a stranger. Um, yeah, right, you're highlighting very good. But one thing you have to know, if you've got the pointer, you won't be able to do very much, so you have to get rid of the pointer. Uh, just above the pointer, you click on that, and that will get rid of the pointer, and then you can do different things. So, Philip, is it working for you? Are you able to write now? Is everybody else able to write? Give me a 
thumbs up if you're able to write on the whiteboard. Okay, so thumbs up if you're able to do it. Ah, very good, Philip. Okay, I'm glad. It seems so easy when you know how, but until you know it, so you can get, especially if you're a language teacher, but a math teacher as well, uh, there are also uh, equations here. You can have, okay, there's the uh, a graph. You can also erase different things. But I would do this one student at a time. I wouldn't have all the students working on the whiteboard at the same time because it might be chaotic. Yeah. Okay, so lots. So again, let's get back to uh, what we're talking. Why did you not finish the PowerPoint presentation during 10 minutes? Oh, is it slow today? Maybe because it's Sunday and a lot of people are online. It could be. Sometimes things are slower. I think the weekends, uh, most people's connections are probably slower. Okay, so making the most of our time, okay, it takes practice. Um, but what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to complete the assignment. So upload the PowerPoint presentation, complete it, upload it to WizIQ and share the link. Now, how is that done? You simply need to have a teacher's account. You need to upload it and um, I'm going to show you how it's done. Oh, we have a new uh, learn, learn from India. Okay, there, I just gave you the tools. You probably came in late, so you don't know what we're talking about. But, um, okay, I'm taking away your tools, your writing tools. Okay, and I'm going to um, go back to the PowerPoint. I'm going to, uh, we've got about five minutes. I'm going to take you on a little tour. Okay, screen share and take you. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take you and show you how. I think Knives wanted to also know. Okay, I'm in my account, okay? And you should all have a teacher's account. But you don't have to have a teacher's account. So I go to home, top right, home. Under home, oops, I'm back. Under home, okay, let me click on home again. Under home, on the left, I will see courses and then live classes and then you'll see content. Under content, everybody has this. You go to upload content. You click on upload content. You browse. Uh, you get something, not an image, it has to be um, a PowerPoint. I think PDF is pretty fast. Okay, there. Um, and then you write a description. Okay, you don't have to, but you have to write something. So I'm going to write certificate. I hope that's enough. And then you can share it with the world by doing allow. You click on continue. And then you see it's processing. It'll take uh, as long as it takes. You'll be notified by email when it's ready. Okay, so uh, let's hope it gets ready quickly so I can share this with you. Once it's ready, once the, um, the file has uploaded, you'll be able to get the link. So for example, here's the link. Okay, so I'm going to take this link. You can also edit it. Let me see if it's up already. Up, oh, it's up. Okay, so I click on it, and then you can download it because it was public. I made it public. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, click on this, and that's the link. Okay, you see that's the link. And that's how it's done, very, very simply. 
you go to your browser and the link is right there in your browser. You copy the link after you upload it and you share it in the course. The course, of course, is right here. The course is called Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. That's the link to the course. I'm going to share it with you. So there's the uh, link to the PowerPoint presentation. And let me share the link to the course. Okay, it's Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Okay, so let me take you to class. I'm going to stop screen sharing. And there it is. Okay, there's the link to the course. All right, so are there any questions? Are there any questions? So what you're going to do is you're going to work on the PowerPoint. Don't forget, you will get a uh, certificate if you do all the assignments. So make sure that you do all the assignments. The certificate will be a TESOL certificate, and it'll be signed by me. Okay, so you're encouraged to do all the assignments. You have to do all the assignments. Every week there's an assignment, or at least every session. Are there any questions? Well, I'm glad I've been clear to you, but I hope that others. If you have any questions, please add the questions to the course, course feed. That's where the questions go in the course feed, and you'll get information in the courseware. So add the link to your uploaded PowerPoint presentation in the course feed. And that's it. You have a week, Philip. A whole week. Okay, so today is Sunday. You have until next week. But if you don't finish it, you can finish it later. It's okay. As long as you finish it within uh, a reasonable time. I think two weeks, no later, unless there's something. Philip, you're still working on your September 15 assignment. Well, that's okay. Work at your own pace, but uh, try to finish it. Okay, so that you don't have too many uh, assignments because that can be stressful. All right, so thank you very much, everybody. You are wonderful, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.